Well, that was glitchy, but it's okay. Let's just get going, shall we? So, welcome to a special edition of Eric the Miltowski Art, my channel here. I got a request uh, about character shading from the one, the only, Nighthawk Warrior. So, I wanted to get to it. Uh, if I put it off and wait till the perfect time, it'll never be here. So, let's get going. Let's talk about character shading. So, I want to do this in two parts. The first part, I just want to handle the idea behind it, the theory, if you will. Um, the thing with shading, there is a plethora of ways to go about it, many ways to do it. Many artists have done numerous uh, styles, numerous what have you. So there's no right or wrong way to go about doing it. You can shade incorrectly. If you have your light source and your shading, you know, your shadowing is not uh, corresponding to the light source, sure, you can do that wrong. But when it comes to the actual method of going about it, there's no right or wrong way. So this video, part one, is going to kind of cover the ways to go about it. What is your style? What are your weaknesses? What are your strengths? And I'm going to encourage you to just play to, the, play to those and get you on your way. So let's dive right in. I'm going to share my screen. I've got a bunch of images we're going to go through on uh, that I have on Photoshop. So I'm going to share my screen. I do apologize if the audio cuts in and out. I noticed my audio on here. I'm using a um, webcam for my audio. It's not great, so I apologize for that. But let's get going. Share the screen. Boom. Nope. Photoshop. All right. This is actually the last image I was going to share. Okay. Shading. Here we have very simple, but very dynamic, very cool. This is Frank Miller from Sin City. This is Marv. And you have high contrast black, high contrast white. Again, we're going to go through a lot of different ways to actually go about shading, uh, shading your character. What is shading? Shading is basically you're creating... A light source and you're adding sh uh, shadowing you know shadows uh, from light to dark you know this on the spectrum this is just black and this is just white literally right we're gonna go into here's some Stephen Platt this is integrating the gray tone you know which he's using cross hatching to get like a gray tone to add under lighting whereas if you're over here you're doing just straight black and white this is Jim Lee's Death Blow art that he's kind of doing a Frank Miller style, but he's adding a lot more detail. And here's another one down here. And here's here's Frank Miller just, again, it's just black and it's just white. You get some little details and stuff, but you are not you don't add any gray tone. So this is one way to go about it for you Frank Miller lovers. And Jim Lee. I love Jim Lee. I love his stuff. And again, here's Stephen Platt. Here you're, you can see the, the cross hatching. And what the cross hatching is doing is allowing more white to come through. So if you have a spectrum, you have your your dark black, and then you go to white. Well, you're kind of you're using this cross hatching to create more of a gray tone and let more more white through. And if we go over here to our next image, we have Dale Keown, awesome shot of of uh, the Hulk. This is where you start from, guys. This is the pencil stage. This is where you're adding all of your your tones. This is where you're adding your shading. The end goal is to get to here, get to your inks, and translate all this work into black and white. All right, and that's the tricky part, which we can't even cover here because that's getting more into inking. We're just going to kind of focus on the shading and how to go about it and ways to do it. But see, I just love looking at this artwork. It's it's amazing. It's cool. Uh, this is Stephen Platt from the '90s. This is what we would call the West Coast style. Lots of cross hatching. It's, you know, you got some, not a whole lot of blacks, but you got blacks, you've got your gray tone, you've got your your whites. Very dynamic, super heroic figures, bulging muscles, just over the top awesomeness. I love the 90s, still do. I could look at this stuff all day long. In fact, I was, while I was searching this, I was just going through and just gawking at all the awesome artwork from Stephen Platt. Very, very cool stuff. So, cross-hatching. 
very nice. Now, there are multiple ways to do cross hatching. There's multiple ways to do all this stuff. So let's look at some more images. Dale Keown we looked at, lots of lots of detail here. He's not leaving anything in the imagination. He's shading everything, making all the muscles pop out and all that good stuff. And again, you might not be an inker, but somebody's gonna have to ink this. Unless you're just gonna go straight black and white to the page with your, your pencils, you could do that too. Here is Jim Lee, another one of my favorites. He does a lot of cross hatching, and depending on what mood he's in, he might do a lot of blacks. But typically, you know, um, in the '90s when he was doing Fantastic Four, he was doing a lot of a lot of shading. Uh, the inks here is Tim Townsend. See that there? It's not um, his normal guy, Scott Williams. A word on the shading, you know. And, and the inking too, which again, we won't really cover, but a lot of it comes down to style and your choice, you know, because someone might ink this differently, you know, different inkers are gonna ink Jim's work differently. If you look down here, here's a here's an area, you know, it's shading, it's behind him, it's his cape. One inker might choose to make this all black. You know, Scott Williams might ink it differently, but here you have Tim Townsend, he goes black and he's kind of going the gamut of the spectrum letting light through, you know, and doing a lot of cross hatching. And notice here the the direction that his lines are going is de determining how much light is coming through, how much white is showing up. Excuse me. So as we get further in, we're going to look at some more modern stuff. And you can see they, they use a different technique with their cross hatching. And, you know, it gives a different look. So again, a lot, this is kind of covering the, the, the style what you're going to choose to do when you're actually adding your shading. There's many ways to do it. Um, there's a storm watch image. This is Jim Lee. Um, again, very heroic. The, the eight head tall man. Okay. That's, there's a an image we're going to look at from the Renaissance back in the day, Raphael and Michelangelo, that that's where the eight head tall classic ideal man came from. And, these hero characters all kind of follow that formula, right? Um, now, obviously, Michelangelo, Raphael, their dudes did not have all these bulging muscles. But this is comic books, guys. This is heroes. And this is why I love this, because this just screams heroic. It looks amazing. I love it. The women are beautiful. Um, more modern art is kind of losing some of this. Uh, the guys aren't so amazing, heroic, and buff. They're kind of like, eh. Uh, but I, I love this. Let's go on. So here's some more modern stuff. This is Pepe La Raza. Kind of the more modern style, I feel like follows more like the Olivier Copiel style. You've got some dark darks, but then you have all this little cross hatching going on. And, you know, it's like a bunch of lines thrown down and they're doing the same thing. They're building up the grays, the gray tones. Um, they're just doing it in a different way. All right. So this is another style you might want to employ. And again, you want to figure out what works for you. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? If you're good on drawing the form really well, but you're not really great about determining, okay, I want a lot of cross hatching here. I want to do my, a lot of grays. You could just do the line work and then do heavy shadows. If you feel like you're comfortable with doing all this, go for it. But but it's it's totally your choice. There's no right or wrong way to go about it what works best for you, what do you feel comfortable with, and two, it's something you can grow into. If you don't feel comfortable with it now, you might grow into it. I've got someone knocking on my door. That's you, I know who it is. Hello! Come here! Come here! Come here. Oh. Ah. What's going on? What's going on? What is this? What is that? Let's see. Oh, oh, who is it? Oh, who is that? Say hi. Say hi. It's all blurry. It's all blurry. Focus. Focus. See that pretty face? Say hi. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Mwah. I love you. Uh, there you go. Okay. Where were we? Boom, 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 boom. Okay. 
allow allow that beautiful girl in my office any day all right so here is Stuart Immonen another more modern guy beautiful Star Wars work uh, the X's here stand for black uh, if you didn't know that just in case just want to throw that out there so you know using heavy blacks going about the cross hatching a different way it's a different style of doing cross hatching more modern you could do this too um a word on i think comic book artists kind of don't get as much appreciation as they deserve we're going to look at some Raphael. we're going to look at a little bit michelangelo in a minute but when it comes to comic book art we're creating all these little beautiful pictures and you know when you when you think back to the renaissance those guys are a lot of the time looking at um they're looking at people right they're doing figure drawings they're doing figure studies they're looking at people the comic book artist doesn't always have reference for what they're drawing now obviously if you're drawing buses and buildings you can find stuff on that but when it comes to creativity when it comes to like uh, making all this stuff up you're doing all this in your head so sure there's star wars movies and stuff and some of these characters you might find and look up for reference but guys this is he's creating all this right he's creating the the atmosphere the feeling the the emotion um the uh the whole point of shading right is to create a mood and so here's just you know one example of many but he's doing a great job right then you have this this crazy creepy looking dude looking on like what's his deal right you're creating all this so as a comic book artist you're making you know i don't know in a typical book 20 pages 20 times five so at least a hundred little miniature drawings that look you know fantastic and you're trying to you're doing it quickly right you're trying to get the most you can out of each panel you're telling a story but the artist is the you're the director you're doing all the shading you're doing all the lighting you're doing everything and so I just want to point that out. I think I think comic book artists are like the almost the equivalent of like present day Renaissance artists, right? We're doing so much work. There's so many different styles, um, but we're 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 creating and crafting all these little beautiful images uh, that people can see. And I think maybe just because it's more readily available, it uh, loses its its value or worth maybe. And you know, back in the day, they're called funny books. Well. What's being created today isn't quite so funny. I mean, it's 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 pretty amazing. So, anyway, that's just my two cents on that. But Stuart Immonen, uh, wonderful artist. I love his art. Love his style. Again, you kind of get a feel for a different way to go about shading. Heavy blacks, and then a different way of doing the cross hatching versus um, the Stephen Platt here, the Jim Lee. Just a different way to go about it. All right. What else we got? Here is a completed inked version of Stuart Immonen. Okay, I wanted to point this out because here, this this girl over here standing on the side, I don't know who she is, but here we have it's just a line drawing, right? Looks great. It's a line drawing. Uh, Iceman, pretty much a line drawing. Little tiny flecks of black. This could be your art style. What's happening here is you're getting all of the shading in the color phase. So if you're not, if you're like, I want to leave it alone, I'm not even going to touch the shading because I'm not good at it. Maybe here or there, I'll throw in a little um, shadow. You could do that, right? Our next image over here um, by Selamandros. I don't know if that's just his art name or what, but totally just line work. Everything is done in the color phase. Now, you don't even have to color it. If you're not a colorist, hand it off to someone who knows what they're doing. But if you could draw this, pretty cool image, right? You could throw in all the details, make it look sweet. You could do that. Totally feasible, right? So again, play to your strengths, learn what works, learn what doesn't. Uh, I wanted to pull up some of these images because, you know, a lot of what we're looking at is inks, you know. But the starting point is always going to be, now I want to move this, but I can't. If I touch it, it's going to stop my screen share, so I won't. I learned my lesson. Um, okay, first off, Angelina Jolie, right? This is a fully rendered, beautiful portrait-looking image. 
comic books, you can do that, but typically you're working more like along the lines of this, right? A quick rendering, you know, you're you're getting all the information in there. You got some blacks, but you're not going fully uh, photorealistic. You're not doing that. You can, but it takes a lot longer. Comics are built for quick images. You're getting the image out there. You're getting it across, putting in, in the necessary details and shading, but you don't have to go crazy, right? This guy, you know, I could see this being translated into ink and being in a comic book. This guy doesn't have a lot of detail. He doesn't really need it. He's not the focus. She's the focus. This chick, you know, doesn't have a lot going on. No, no defining details in the face, which is fine because the colorist is going to come in and add some, you know, little things here and there. You won't even notice the lack of, of work. This is built for quickness, for speed. And so that's why as an artist, you should be going out, taking a look at real life, doing figure studies, doing quick drawings and studies of people you see find out how you know the folds in the clothes how to shade that what's it look like um and so you're developing a style right you're developing what you like what your strengths are what your weaknesses are again so again i'm going to harp on that because that's what it all really comes down to uh what do you like what are you not good at leave out the stuff you're not good at if you want to get better out of it at it work at it and then slowly integrate it into your style you could do that um so here we have photorealistic. Here's something more comic booky. Uh, I wanted to show you this because this is a very nice pencil drawing of a face, right? And then here's another one, but this one you could see the contrast is different, right? So you have heavy blacks and then it kind of goes through the gamut and you have white, white, and then some gray. Again, you're gonna have to decide, do you wanna do a lot of cross hatching to get to this? Or do you wanna leave some of it to the colorist? Again, so all these things are you have to figure out you, that are going into as you're executing it. Um, that's what you got to do. That's what you got to figure out. We come over here. I got some Raphael. This is a study that he did of David from Michelangelo, actually. This is a Michelangelo. Again, back to the eight-head tall man. That's This ideal man was created back in the Renaissance. This is mostly what our comic books are full of, the ideal man. Obviously, he's not as buff as the Hulk. He's not as buff as Stephen Platt's prophet that we saw earlier. But it's it's a pencil drawing. It's got shading and all that good stuff. Love it. Michelangelo, same deal. You see he's... he's you can kind of see... That kind of looks like a little bit like what Dale Keown was doing on the, on the picture of the Hulk, right? You can see all the little muscles popping out. All that good stuff. This is the starting point when it comes to shading. You want to do this in the pencil stage, okay? But again, maybe you're not great at it. You just want to do the line work. That's totally cool, cool too. Um, sorry, I heard some folks out my window. Now, I, I threw in some images of scenery because, again, in a comic book, you might ha you're going to have those, um, what do you call them? Uh, brain fart. They're called. Uh, no, scene. Anyway, establishing shots. There it is. Okay, so you're going to have these. You're going to have to create these. You're going to have to uh, make it look good, make it look realistic, make it look feasible, right? You don't want to have just some crappy lines. You want it to look like a tree. You want your rocks to look like rocks. And that's going to take some practice, right? You can't just kind of go into it thinking, oh, I can do that. It's easy. You can tell when an artist doesn't isn't too good with inanimate objects, right? So all this stuff you're, you're going to have to mess with as well. Um, here's another one down here. Again, I just wanted to show you these because here you have shading. It's not on a human. It's not on a character. But it, the same kind of thing goes into it. you got your dark darks. You know, your trees, you're building up the form, you're using, you know, gray tone or whatever. So it's something you have to think about. All this stuff goes into making a comic. All this stuff goes into, you know, creating a beautiful image. You know, that's not even taking into consideration the layout, the design. You know, Jim Lee here is creating this whole space station that doesn't exist, adding all these intricate components and parts to this cool looking spaceship. That's all stuff, you know, a comic book artist does. 
So again, I think they don't get enough credit. But um, but I think that's it, guys. I think I, I covered everything I wanted to cover. I did bring up this image because we didn't even talk about the inking phase, which is a whole nother whole nother thing. Because when when it's if you are inking your own stuff, you know this might be your pencil drawing, right? And Jim Lee's pencil drawings can be kind of sketchy. Um, you know, sometimes they're detailed and sometimes they're, you know, this, this is kind of like more, a little more on the sketchy side, but you can decide, Hey, on the underside here of his rib cage, I want to do just, you know, lines, or you might want to go full black. Those are just kind of like decisions you have to make as you're, as you're inking. Right. So we'll cover more in part two, but again, for part one, I just wanted to point out, it's totally up to you. It's, it's something you have to develop and figure out as the artist, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? There's many ways to go about shading itself. There's no right or wrong way, right? You could do however you like, however you, um, you know, how, however you want to do your characters. You know, if, if you like the open lines and you want everything else to be done in colors, you can do that. Totally fine. Right. You don't have to go all crazy and get all cross hatchy. And I think it looks great. It looks dynamic, right? I love Jim Lee's work. I think it's it's very dynamic. And, you know, again, getting back to the kind of the reason why you might want to add shading, it's all about mood. You're creating this this feeling. You're creating a mood. You're creating, you know, when you look at um, old time like horror stuff, you have the upshot of the woman screaming and the light is like right under her and it's casting a shadow up on her face. It creates like this thrilling effect, right? So you could use the shading to your advantage when you want to create a certain feeling in a scene. Um, or if you want to do a full silhouette, you can create just a, a statement with a, a silhouette that's, you know, if it's just open lines, sure, it could kind of still work, but there's something about that 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 black black you know like stamp on a page it's so those are all things you're gonna have to work with wrestle with figure out um here you can see very kind of rough you know the pencils aren't even staying in there you know scott williams is the inker he's gonna have to figure out how he wants to ink that so lots of things to think about we'll get into it more in part two but guys i thank you so much for hanging out with me covering all this good stuff if you have any more questions, drop them in the description. We didn't get to finish my little video in the in the beginning, but all my stuff is on ericknotowskiart.com. All my links, um, my book that is currently in demand on Indiegogo, Shadow Sentry, is uh, the link's in the description, but it's also on my website. So thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Hope this has been helpful. Drop a like, drop a comment, and we'll see you next time. Peace.